Hello, William Johnson here, and this is part two of Effective Teaching, a series where I speak more on the how as opposed to what to practice, but just some methods in, to help your practice time to be more efficient. And it's not just congas, I'm using congas, but it could be the cajon, it could be bongos, it could be this, the, a snare drum. It's just some ideas on that you can apply and glean from, hopefully, that will help. Now, as I mentioned, it's not necessarily the what to practice. I did another video, a series of other videos, where I spoke on some things that are important to develop for every conga player or percussion period as uh, basic things, foundational things such as timing, dynamics, and etc. But in this video, I'm talking more about the how. The, once you know what you need to work on, some some structure issues, some ways that you can you can some things that you can take from a template uh, that you can create an actual routine for. Uh, just some inspiration for that. But before we get into the, today's lesson, I just wanted to remind you if you've been watching these videos to subscribe, to hit a like. I'd love if you'd be part of this, this YouTube uh, journey, this family here at William Johnson at my uh, YouTube channel. So yeah, hit that subscribe button and the notification button. That way you'll be notified of new videos. There's percussion tutorials that go up. There are music videos that are on the channel and I'll be, I have some new music coming out. So that'll be out as well as some video logs, some vlogs, some where I talk about various things concerning music and yeah, some other announcements and all that. But anyways, into this lesson. So today in, first, in episode one, I used rudiments as a pivot to talking about some structural ways or things that you can implement in your practice routine. And I mentioned how, you know, wood shedding and jamming is great, but having a specific focus in your practice is very important using a metronome and, and some of the basic things uh, to keep you accountable. And I use rudiments as a pivot to talk about some ideas, but in this lesson, I wanna talk about learning rhythms and variations of rhythms, some ideas, some tips for you uh, that you can take into your practice. So what I have in front of me is a curriculum by Mel Bay. It is the Tomas Cruz Conga Method, one of my favorite curriculums, and it's by Mel Bay. And I'm just gonna use this as an example. If I were practicing a rhythm that was taken from that, it could be anything. Now, I highly suggest that you go check out this curriculum, this is volume two. There are some things that Mel Bay has put on YouTube featuring uh, Tomas Cruz. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot because I want you to go ahead and support the uh, publisher there. I think they're doing some great things or have done some great things with these volumes. But anyways, um, I'm gonna use a six eight rhythm in, in this curriculum and it's Marcha 3 and March, Marcha 4. So a 6-8, something a little bit different. I normally do a lot of teaching with 4-4 four, four patterns in contemporary music. This is a 6-8 pattern, but it's just to give you an idea of how some ways that I learn a new rhythm and, and try to master that rhythm and also implement the variations of that rhythm and put them together to practice. So perhaps you can glean something from this. So. The first rhythm, and I'm not going to talk go into how it actually starts because it starts on in six eight and it starts on beat three. But I'm going to use the actual continual, the loop part where we it just plays continually once you get into the rhythm. So the rhythm is is like this, and I'm going to play it at a medium tempo. I'm not teaching the rhythm; I'm just going to show you some ways that once I get a rhythm that I practice that, so you can glean from that. The rhythm is bass finger open. Bass slap finger, bass finger open, bass slap finger over and over. Now the finger can also be called toe, like palm toe. In this curriculum it's bass toe, but it's all the same thing. So the rhythm, if I were to play it continually, it would be bass toe open, bass slap toe, bass toe open, bass slap toe, and that's over and over. So bass toe open bass slap toe bass toe open bass slap toe. Now that's that rhythm. The next rhythm is a little different. Instead of starting on the bass, we'll start on 
the right hand with an open note and it will be open right open finger open on the lower finger bass slap toe bass toe open bass right left and that's the rhythm so if I played it all together it's So it's a little different than this. Actually, it's much different than this. So it's it would be really cool if we could take those two rhythms and put them together, right? Now this isn't a traditional way of doing this. It's 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 just adding more vocabulary to my to my rhythmic palette so that perhaps I can put some elements of this rhythm within a song. Or that in a band that I'm playing or on the worship stage, I can take elements of the of this, right? The more that I have in my vocabulary, the more words that I have in my vocabulary, the stronger my grammar is, the more in depth my conversation can be, right? So if I put these two rhythms together, they might sound like this, and I'll do this really slow. So those are the two rhythms together. Now, one of the ways that I practice a rhythm is, now this is after I've already analyzed the rhythm and learned it part by part, maybe the first three notes, three eighth notes and whatever, after I've already done that and can at least play the rhythm at a, a slow or medium tempo, then I'll play that rhythm for a long block of time with a metronome. And it might be 15 minutes long at a certain beats per minute so that I, it's that repetition allows me to master that rhythm. And again, I say it, uh, I've said it many times, but one of the ways that you can know that you've, you, you can move on from a rhythm or that you really know that you've had it mastered is if you can actually have a conversation with someone while playing that rhythm or at least be, not get too distracted. And if they, they ask you, do, would you like some water? You'd be like, yeah, I would love some water. And you could still hold down that rhythm. That's a good indication that you actually have it, okay? It's a great indication that you actually have it. Um, so anyways, but what about blending these two rhythms together now? Now, not only are we learning, having a way of practicing two rhythms within a an abbreviated time, practice time, say your time is not that long, but you're also practicing the ability to create variations, to improvise. All of these things are they're mental exercises as well that I believe they can't hurt, they only help. You're enforcing that ability to switch from one rhythm to another. So yes, I actually practice switching rhythms and placing rhythms together. Same way with rudiments. If you learn a rudiment, it's good to find a way to put a rudiment within a rhythm and practice it. I'm not talking about in your practice time doing a rudiment, a rhythm, and then forcing it on the stage with a band. That could be toxic and detrimental. I'm talking about your practice time taking it and being intentional, that rudiment, that rhythm, and practicing the variation, practicing putting one thing inside another. So if I, I might, one, one of the things that I do then is I'll take this rhythm and practice the one rhythm, I'll play it two times to a metronome in a row, the whole rhythm, then play the other rhythm two times in a row. So I trade rhythm, rhythm, if it was in 4-4, four, four, this is not, and then the other rhythm, the other rhythm, and back into the... So I'm trading them. So if this one, if I'm in six, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, other rhythm, five, six, other rhythm, and I switch, alternate like that. So it would look like this, doing it very slow. Bass, toe, open, bass, slap, toe, bass, toe, open, bass, slap, toe, again. Open, bass, slap, toe, bass, toe, open, bass, slap, toe, switch. comes and I switch to the first rhythm see what I did there now these two rhythms are quite different they're related same time signature and the feel is similar but they're quite different and one thing that becomes can become difficult is the end of one rhythm to the beginning of the other 
And so sometimes it's good just to practice a transition. Okay, so for instance, the transition of the second rhythm that I was doing is I'll take the last three notes, three eighth notes, which is bass, open, open. Okay, left, right, left happens to be for this rhythm. And then I'll practice it with the first three notes of the first rhythm. So that would look something like this. Bass, bass, toe, open. Now, what happened there is I ended up with three left left hand strokes in a row. Now, if I'm not used to something like that, that becomes difficult. So I might need to practice that by itself instead of the two variations together because it's something that I'm not used to. Once I've got a good handle on that transition, then I can go in and practice the two rhythms together. So this can be applied to just about anything. If you're in a marching band or you're learning a new song, a rhythm in a song, it may be a transition that you're having a hard time with. And perhaps you need to take that transition out and just focus on practicing that by itself. Loop it. Just take the get down to the nitty gritty of what is giving you a hard time. It might just be two notes. It might be four notes. It might be the last two notes of one transition into the first two notes of the other two other transition. But it's good to analyze that and bring that out and then put that all in a collective time. So like I said, I have the metronome. I practice the first rhythm. Again. So rhythm, one whole time, rhythm, one whole time, other rhythm, one whole time, other rhythm, one whole time, the other rhythm, first rhythm, okay, I mean, f you get the picture, one rhythm, two times in a row, then the other rhythm, two times in a row. It doesn't just have to be that way. You can play one rhythm four times in a row, then play the other rhythm four times in a row. Okay? So, but that's one way that I put these rhythms together and practice them. This can be done with a tumbao. It can be done with this 6-8 rhythm here. It could be done with a rhythm that you're learning for a song. It could be uh, two different transitions within one song. Practicing this, taking it out and learning this as a rhythm and this. Okay, it might be practicing a rhythm in the song and then when it goes to halftime in the bridge or the chorus or the tag um, and, and practicing those two together as an exercise. Okay, uh, so these, these are just another way that I practice and say and take that and put it in a block of time. Remember, just like the part one, it's important to be able to put these things into a block of time because it helps to keep you accountable. If you have four hours, that four hours might be a block of time, but I say to be more specific within that four hours, give yourself a 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute block of time. This is what you're gonna practice on with absolutely no breaks, no breaks, no water, no getting up to the bathroom, just that. Now, you have extra time because you have four hours, if that's the case, then you can do it again. But you want to give yourself a block of time where there's no breaks and it is consistent repetition. Okay? So, hopefully this helps out. Just some tips and ideas. Uh, yeah, I'll see you on part three. And oh yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.